Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee with Sledge. I wish that this was a better intro. I had another one cut, but I just heard that Stefan Bonner has passed. UFC legend, friend, someone that I talked to multiple times. I literally just got done talking to him to check on him to make sure he was doing okay. And I just found out that he has passed away. Stefan Bonner doesn't do a lot of interviews. But he took time out of his day to come and see me at the Comic-Con that I was at, Unicon in Las Vegas, to come sit down with me and chop it up with an old friend. There won't be any outro to this. Just please enjoy Stefan Bonner like I did. Remember Stefan Bonner for the legend that he is, that he was, and understand that the UFC would not be in the position it is right now if it wasn't for him. Rest easy, my friend. This is one of the hardest things to do. The American Psycho will never be forgotten. Not in my eyes. So enjoy, like I did, this interview with Stefan Bonner. And rest easy, my friend. So Mike's on. Mike's on. We're live. Good to go. All right. Hey, buddy. What's up, Sledge, man? <laughs> it's been a long time. Man. I know. We it's wrestled been, together at Agua. Agua. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. And that was uh, was it two years ago? Uh, I think uh, two or three years ago, and. Um, yeah, I remember it was one of my uh, earlier matches yeah. uh, because I I was still having a lot of trouble uh, remembering the match at that time. I got a lot better, at, uh, yeah, of yeah. course, but yeah, and that was a three-way with uh, Dave Dutra, yeah, so there's a lot of moving Dave. parts. Yeah, it was good, too. I think we had them from Jump Street. Yeah. I mean, you came, at, you came out to that music, man. You were... It's my, yeah, you were hopping, bro. Eminence Front, yeah, my uh, UFC song. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like when I was like when I heard that I was gonna wrestle you, I was a little scared. <laughs> I was just a tiny bit, just because it's, it's you. You knock motherfuckers out. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you, you yeah. know, you it, it, if it wasn't for you, the UFC wouldn't even probably exist. And that's how I feel when I wrestle like a big name. You know, like I, I had a match with Nick Aldis. Uh, in Minnesota last year, yeah. and I felt like that too. Like, all right, man, it's a big name. I gotta have a fucking good match, you know. And how'd it go? I mean, it great. It was one of my best matches, man. Uh, Wait, it, I thought I was your best man. <laughs> that was a three way. That wasn't a real match. Come, we we barely even scrapped in that. Come you know? on, you choked me out. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You yeah, choked that me was a solid match, dude. Yeah, you choked me. They, no, they not, put on a good show. They have a rowdy crowd in there, man. It's a fun place oh, to wrestle Ugwa at. Is, is absolutely insane. What's that place called? Ugwa. No, no, the no. the ah oh, the place where oh, they have the, the shows uh, the, at the the the, uh, uh, the Ritz. The Ritz. Yes, yes. Yeah, Ritz man. there. Everyone's burning, fucking reefer. You know, yeah. cloud of smoke in the air. But they get into it, man. That's a nice crowd. They're hot. From the, the get go, from like from Jump Street, they're hot as shit. 
And I don't know about you, but when man, when the crowd's into it, that gets me going, man. It's nothing like that. It makes it makes the job feel like you're actually doing the job. You know, when I've wrestled in like. I've, I've wrestled in front of nobody. How about, yeah, I was going to say all the COVID matches with oh, no crowd. Man. Fuck, no, it's that depressing. Was rough. And I'm doing like kind of like hardcore matches with like PCO. So I'm sitting there and like, but when we're shooting television, we're just not, we're not filming for everybody. You know, we're filming, we're not filming for the audience, you know, there. We were filming for everybody at home. So it was like, say we, say we fucked up a move or something like that. There we go. Or, you know, hey, do it again. We'll just cut it in. You know, so it's like, okay, you know, that's kind of a little bit easier. But at the same time, though, it's like we're doing all these hardcore stuff like PCO and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's kind of hard waiting for that crowd reaction of getting hit with like a chair over the head and nothing. Yeah, it's eerily quiet. Yes. Did you do any COVID matches? Uh, did I do? No, I, I don't think I did any COVID matches. But when I'm the ultimate fighter, that's how yeah. it was fighting on the show with yeah. no crowd where it's just like total silence, man. You could, you know, hear the, the, the wood in the ring every yeah, time yeah, you take yeah. a step. And it's kind of eerie, you know, Speaking it feels of, like practice. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 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 for sure. Absolutely. Speaking of the ultimate fighter, man. That was, oh, how long ago was the Ultimate Fighter? Man, we sh- shot it in tw- uh, 20, uh, 2004, actually. 2004. In the fall of 2004, the match with Forrest was April of 2005. And how did that come so. about? How did you actually, how did you actually, like... Well, remember the show The Contender? Yeah. So um, they had tryouts in Chicago, and I went and try out for that. Frank Stallone was hosting the auditions. It was at the Windy City Gym. And they put me in there with a guy who didn't know shit. I beat his ass. So I'm like, I'm getting on this show for sure. Fuck you yeah. know? They end up going with different weight classes. Then I was at Jiu-Jitsu, and the guys there were talking about, like, hey, you hear there's going to be an ultimate uh, a UFC reality show. And I'm like, no, you guys are wrong. It's actually boxing. And I already tried out for that. Like, no, no, dude, the UFC's having one too. And then, sure enough, I went home and went to UFC.tv because they didn't even own UFC.com then. And uh, I saw that they were having a show, and they wanted me to send in a tape of my fights and uh, just a little uh, interview in front of the camera with me giving a little bio on myself. And yeah. uh, from there, they had 30 of us out at the Palace Station. They locked us up there for a week to do like drug tests and the MRI for your brain. And background check and all that and from there they narrowed it down to the 16 that you saw on the show wow Uh, yeah it feels like yesterday man that was my first week ever in vegas and we were literally locked in the room with security guards like watching making sure we didn't leave so i was just like looking through the window for a week like ah it's funny because you you said uh, ufc.tv and that was like before like tapout.com it was like in your face dot com you know in your face face. that's a good memory man man. yeah hell yeah dude mask was yeah uh, rip mask brother that was my first sponsorship funny thing about that is he actually pulled me into their uh um, RV uh, before the fight with Forrest. It was at the parking lot of the Hard Rock Hotel. Yeah. And um, and he pulled me in there and said, win or lose, man, I like your style. We're going to sponsor you. And uh, he kept his word. And then sure enough, after that, a few months later, they had me out to the tap out headquarters. And they were like, bro, you see this, man? We used to just be in this fucking building right here. But after that fight with Forrest, we bought out that business, bought out that business, bought out the businesses on the other side of the parking lot. We knocked down the walls and we haven't been able to print the shit fast enough. That's fucking you know? awesome. Dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, think, just think about that, bro. Like, like seriously, like, like, sit back and just you probably have multiple times but think about that if it wasn't for you and Forrest going in there and beating the shit out of you you guys went for what 15 minutes right yeah yeah you guys went 15 minutes going in there and just literally beating the shit out of each other not knowing who's going to win at the end no one knew who was going to win right the place is going absolutely fucking bazonkers you know what I'm saying and if it wasn't for because I, if I'm not mistaken Dana funded that that the Vertina brothers funded that whole thing themselves yeah it was a it was a it was hey we're gonna make or break this thing yeah right? usually the yeah. network pays to do the show and then right. they get money from sponsorships but the UFC had to say hey we'll cough up the two million dollars to do the show just let us have a shot on TV and that was like their last Hail Mary attempt to save the company because they were done yeah they, they were, were 62 million in the hole and like my whole life I've been a martial arts nerd man I just love the martial arts I wanted to learn them all and uh, none of my friends really 
um, caught on. Never, they didn't like it as much as me, man. And I'd bring the VHS tapes of the UFC to parties, and I'd force people to watch it. And and I'm like, man, this sport's so cool. Like, why don't you guys love it the way I do? So so just to be part of the the reason that the sport got over, man, and you know, and be part of the history of martial arts is like a dream come true. Yeah, dude. Know? Like that's fucking cool, dude. And like, I my question to you is before it was. You know, before you got into the UFC, you were doing like kind of like what pro wrestling, like the indies, right? Like you were taking like these yeah. fights in casinos. I was the Ironheart Crown champion, Ironheart, and yeah. that's where I got started. It was in Hammond, Indiana. That's where I was born, and I grew up in Munster, Indiana. So nothing motivates you more than not wanting to get your ass kicked in front of all your friends <laughs> you grew up with, man. Yeah, in front right. of your brothers, in front of their friends. My dad was there with buddies from work. I'm like, oh, I can't be. It was a four-man tournament, but I trained my ass off because I'm like, man, I don't want to get my ass beat in front of everyone, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I ended up winning those two fights, and then, the, you know, my career took off from there. But that was it, man. That was pre-athletic commission. I watched Terry Martin fucking put two rolls of just pure tape on each hand. It's like he had casts on his hand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I fucking fought him a few months later. I'm sure he did the same thing for me. We had a good fight. I one and uh, we did 10 minute rounds man and that was uh yeah that's a bitch 10 minute rounds are a bitch dude that's man. insane 10 minute rounds They're like pride that's what yeah, pride yeah, used yeah, to yeah. do yeah yeah dude yeah. pride was i was i was huge in mixed martial arts and one of my like closest best friends is jason von flu right all right the yeah. von flu the choke von man choke. yes sir made that thing famous yeah, he, that's a yes, great move man from when he uh, choked alex Kerlexis alex Kerlexis. Yep. So when the guy goes guillotine and he jumped yep. to the side, side control yep isol grip man it's right there push that fucking butt that that upper bicep right into or right into that karate yeah artery. the guy kind of puts guy, himself in yeah. it here you yep. know yeah so yeah man um and i've done a couple you know smokers here and there you know i, I fought, okay yeah 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 um just it wasn't for me, man. Like, I don't know. There's something about getting punched in the face that just doesn't. I'm, I'm kind of gorgeous <laughs> to a point, you know? You you get sick of it. You know, yeah. when you're wrong and hungry, like, you don't mind it so much. But by the by the end of it, after like 14 years of it, I'm like, I know. I'm like, years. Uh, you know, just getting hit in the head on yeah. a regular basis. I'm like, man, I'm going to be a fucking watch, walking dementia case in a few years if I don't cool this you know and i had something actually show up on my mri that didn't used to be there i was gonna um, ask you that about was, that it's um uh indicator for ct it's called cavum septum polyculum and yeah. uh it's actually in rocky four that's the reason he had to retire because that showed up on his mri so that kind of scared me and was like yeah you know it might be time to you know just stop getting hit in the head you know because you get old you slow down a little and i was never fast to begin with so the shots you to be able to get out of the way of now all of a sudden are catching you and uh, it's not a good feeling no not i mean you guys are hitting each other with four ounce gloves with with fucking yeah, yeah no, with, even with, in the with, gym you're yeah. sparring with all these studs and they're yeah. wearing 16s, 16s but still yeah. getting fucking crack with gilbert ivel's right hand our Vitor, or our vanderlei yeah. man yeah it shit's not good for you are you still rolling around a little bit just kind of stay loose yeah, I mean, I taught a seminar with Forrest last month. That Hell was my yeah. first time uh, on the mats in a while since my injury. And that, yeah, so I'll get on. I'll teach a little. I'll roll around. Um, but, yeah, just uh, jujitsu, you don't get hit. It's not as dangerous right. uh, in terms of uh, head trauma. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll touch spar a little bit, but uh, that's about it. No more helping, like, fucking uh, big strong guys get ready for fights or like Chidi and Joe Kawani, you know I used yeah. to train with him he was my sparring partner for Anderson Silva that dude could crack he could hit hard so I go in the gym oh you want to give Chidi some work uh no uh, <laughs> yeah uh, better not. not today I want to get not, cracked uh, with that punch you know uh, can I think about it for a second <laughs> uh no I'm good thanks you know but yeah man that's do the UFC and it, like like I said, man, the UFC like would not be what it is today if it wasn't for you or Forrest. You know, I I I was at home watching that. 
you know. And now, like, it's crazy that I call you a friend, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, you we know? put the sport over, man. A lot of people were on edge. Do I like this? Don't I like it? And well, that really it had helped. such the bad stigma for the longest time yeah, that it totally, was man. that it was like yeah, human was cockfighting. Human fighting. Cockfighting. John yeah. McCain. Yeah, man. He was actually a big boxing lobbyist. Yeah, so. you know, which is weird. You know, total blow. It was illegal yeah. in 38 states, yeah. man. Uh, back when I started fighting and after the ultimate fighter the states just started dropping like dominoes legalizing it you know could you imagine because like one of the big things that they were talking about was putting like alligators around the fucking cage or something like that <laughs> could you imagine trying to fight and like trying to legalize that with alligators around the fucking Man, cage or something <laughs> I've seen some crazy <laughs> shit um, you know you see that Russian promotion where it's team fighting and the yeah. triangular yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. ring that's fucking crazy I've dude. seen the fucking where they it's arm wrestling, oh, and, then they, 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 yeah. and then they're fucking hitting each other in the face with your other arm, trying to win over the... I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> or that, that um, sport where they slap each other, but you yeah. just got to sit there you and take it. fucking eat it. Your va- face out and just fucking take it, man. Like, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I love watching it, but man, that is you did, fucking and then, stupid. And then they, they get hit, right? The guys that get slapped, they go... And then they, they have the guys behind yeah. them, like, f- like, fucking catch them. They're like, are you okay? You're like, yeah, I think... They're Obviously <laughs> can cost a little, can cost and a little shake bit. it out. Yeah, and then, yeah okay, time yeah. for another we're, one. We're good. We're I'm good. ready. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> Fuck. And the guy who wins, dude, he's got these fucking Meat fingers hooks. that are like bananas. Yeah, Just dude. His big paws, man. And yeah, big old neck. Like, man, I would not want to get fucking slapped by that dude. Fuck no, dude. Hell, if somebody was like, "Yo, can we slap us up?" Like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, I'm a pro That's, wrestler, like. Dude, in pro wrestling, yeah, like the thing I hate, one of the things I hate the most are the fucking slaps to the chest. You hate getting chopped. I hate getting chopped. I'm like, just fucking punch me. <laughs> 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 Fuck the chops, man. That's Give like my a chair shot. That's my go-to, man. Is like <laughs> chop forearm, chop forearm, man. That's my that's my go-to. I don't think I you got sh- the handprints yeah, all over man. your chest and you shit. You're like badge of honor, kind of like cauliflower. Here. Yeah, I could see it. You know, you don't have I'm any cauliflower. Here. A little, a little bit, bit here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Notice, but enough. I stayed on top of draining it. You know. Oh, okay. So when it blows up like that, um, and you crack your cartilage, yeah, like you don't have cauliflower yet. It looks like it. It's all filled with blood. But if you keep getting hit, then that calcifies and dries. Then you have right. cauliflower here. But if you like, you gotta. It sucks training for a fight, and you've got some cracked cartilage, and you literally on a daily basis, you gotta fucking drain that air. And I remember, like, you know. Um, before one of my last fights, say I'm so sick of draining my ear, I'm just going to let it go. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. I've been doing this 13 years and, like, I don't have cauliflower, man. Fuck, all I got to do is another month of draining my ear. Otherwise, I'll have it forever. Fuck it. And I'd stick the needle uh, in. And, and you would do it yourself? You just stick yeah, the needle in? Yeah, yeah, I got pretty good at it. Yeah. One-handed. You got to, like, squeeze with this hand and fucking draw the syringe back with this I'll one. S- and my, I did it better than my doctor. My doctor <laughs> fucking had... Oh, you need to use a, that's thick blood. You need a big fucking 18 gauge needle, you know? That's like a big ass uh, cannon of a needle. Yeah. Big puncture. And I'm like, no, dude, like, fucking, I do it by myself. I could use an insulin syringe, like a 28 gauge, yeah, and yeah, fucking, yeah. like, fill that syringe up, no problem. That's insane. You man. get good at it, man. So, you, what made you get into pro wrestling, though? Because that's where I met you was through pro wrestling. Yeah, and I always I saw that you were doing it on like I followed your stuff and I was like, Stefan Bonner's getting to pro wrestling. I know a lot of MMA guys that are made the transition over into professional wrestling, like Riddle. Uh, Riddle, I think, is probably what, uh, and uh, 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 Shayna Baszler. I knew Shayna on yeah. the Indies before she was signed with WWE. Same with Riddle. Uh, what made you? go that route into professional wrestling i mean as a little kid like uh you know in school when uh, you're in fifth grade they ask what you want to do when you grow up i wanted to be a pro wrestler oh yeah so what were your I, favorites I always, when you're growing up my what what were some of your favorites growing up oh man my dad would take me to the rosemont horizon in chicago and we'd see fucking uh who was that hogan and uh king kong bundy um Oh, the the Beefcake and Valentine, the Dream Team. They yeah. had the feud with the Bulldogs. Those were some good matches. I remember I met um, uh, Ricky Steamboat. I shook his hand. That was like, wow, uh, dream come true there. Um, 
Yeah, who else, man? Don Morocco. Uh, of course, the Ultimate Warrior, just because he was so jacked. Just and he was jacked fucking the kills. military pressing 300 pounders Fuck. over his head, dude. And no, the Road Warriors, man. Shout out, Hawking wa- animal. Shout out, Warrior, right here on my shirt. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. And sh- it- shout out to fucking uh, Animal. He just animal. died last year, man. Yeah, dude. Hell I got yeah. to meet him. Uh, I wrestled on a few shows. He helped work, man. But that was pretty cool. He let me wear shoulder pads. That's fucking cool. Yeah. And, like, I remember him. He was like, 275 and I'm like how about when you wrestled how much did you weigh he's like 330 I'm holy shit yeah dude, dude. him and Hawk were big oh, and they were man. brutes bro like that, you would hear fucking stories about them literally beating the shit out of people well um fucking uh Hawk w- worked for the Yakuza that's what uh, Animal was telling me that in Japan after they'd wrestle he'd go out with the Japanese mobsters and go fucking shake people down oh, and make some I, extra money. I, I didn't fucking yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. What's 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 cool? Like you said that you you met you know Animal last year when I was here at Unicon. That's where we're at right now. We're at Unicon. Um, I met Scott Hall. Oh no way. Yeah, Scott Hall and Nash were here with uh, with Greg Valentine. Dude, talk about yeah. I gotta wait. Like I was telling you back in the 80s and shit was really into wrestling. Yeah. I got away from it. But then I worked at Roadway after uh, I graduated high school in 95. And in the late 90s, that's where the NWO came on. Yeah. And then there were some guys at work that were fucking, oh, you got to watch this. And they got me back into it. And I'm telling you, dude, fucking suck. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, NWO, dude. Man, that was such a good gimmick. Like, talk about just taking over the whole sport. Man, like they they had the Monday Night Wars. Hell yeah, and they fucked shit up, dude. Oh, hell yeah, like they they had everyone thinking it was real. I remember Cody Rhodes telling me a story about how he um they they fucking um uh they jumped the NWO came in and jumped um. This is a little Mexican guy that does a 609. Uh, 619 Ray Mysterio. Yeah, Mysterio. Yeah. They fucked him up. And then Dusty Rhodes told Cody, like, oh, yeah, Mysterio's in the hospital. He's got a uh, fractured neck and all this. And Cody was, like, buying it hook, line, and sinker. Like, no <laughs> way. This is not working. They it. need to be arrested, dude. He <laughs> totally was working his own they kid, working dude. Working his kid. But, they, dude, everyone classic. bought that shit, man. Like, it was real. I also loved um, one of my favorites. Is uh, Brian Pillman? Yeah, and he's he's another guy who fucking the worked cannon. the boys. Yeah. yeah, dude, he used and to. Work, yeah, he had everyone thinking he was fucking nuts, and he was a little nuts. Well, now his son's out there. You yeah, know, Brian, Brian Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah, man. I've heard a uh, couple shows with him to, on I it. I got to uh, uh, I got to work with him at Northeast Wrestling out in Connecticut. You ever worked for Northeast? No, I have. I worked for um, uh, what was that? House of Glory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hof. Yeah, yeah. Isn't out that, in New York. Isn't that a uh, that's Red's pr- promotion, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. That was my first match. I was supposed to um, fight Riddle on that, but he pulled out like the day of. And uh, Show Tanaka, Ring of Honor guy, yeah, yeah. used to the, the, you wrestle for you guys. That's who I end up wrestling. And uh, that was my first. Sorry, that was my first match, and it was a good one, man. And who who trained you in pro wrestling? I trained over at. Um, uh, FSW here in Vegas. Oh, you did? Okay. You so yeah, my, yeah. my first trainer, uh, Disco Inferno. Oh. So I give Disco a shout out. And yeah, he really worked with me, man. Just the basics and learning how to sell, you know, that's where it's at. That's, that's, that's the key. And that's what I, I believe like is lost in the world of pro wrestling right now is actually selling. You know, I... If you could do a good sell job, you don't really have to do fuck all. You don't got to take nearly as many bumps, dude. Yeah, learn from Ric Flair, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah, you see guys bump, 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 and they're not selling. They end up taking like fucking 20 bumps in a match because they're not selling. You I've know? never taken a Canadian destroyer, and I don't plan on taking one. Oh, my God, oh. dude. That's the stupidest move ever. <laughs> You like actually have to fucking do a backflip and land on your head. Yeah, like it's yeah, no way. I remember uh, I was wrestling a guy. I'm not gonna mention his name. Um, he dropped me on my neck. He did a hangman. Oh, he did a hangman tombstone, and um, it was on a low boy ring, kind of like what we wrestled at Ugwa. And uh, he didn't he didn't put his knees up, so my shoulders didn't catch. He went flat butt, and my head wham. And on those low boy rings, oh. there's no give. 
And that was the day before I flew to England to start a tour. Oh, man. And I thought I broke my neck. Dude, that's the thing about pro wrestling that people don't understand. You are putting your Preach life it. into someone else's hands. Preach your health. It. Yeah, dude, you, you got to really trust people with your body, man. And, like, most of the injuries are about guys botching a move and not dropping you right, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's there's a lot of trust involved. And it's it's not a good feeling. That's the thing about MMA. You're in charge of protecting yourself. But now got to fucking give yourself over to someone else and just pray that they're uh you know good with you and drop you right yeah to, yeah, to take look, care of you yeah look yeah. at um man stone cold i mean he fucking uh he broke his neck booker t yeah yeah he broke his neck when owen dropped him on his oh and owen yeah. owen yep mm -hmm. yep uh, uh, he, uh hit him with the tombstone a sit out tombstone and uh his head was too low so when he hit his neck actually Spike, he actually spiked him into the mat and then shot and then, uh, I think he broke like uh, like two vertebrae in his neck. I was on uh, Steve Austin's podcast. Me uh, too. Were you really? Yeah, oh, I fuck did yeah, it a few years ago. Yeah, I did, it, I did it. That was like what helped launch me into the indies. Oh, awesome. Yeah, was being on his podcast which, shout out Steve Austin, man, what? You know, I still talk to him today. Dude, he's an awesome dude. dude. Like, what a fucking brother. But he told me that story too, and he was their main breadwinner in WWE. And a long uh, time. He was out for a while with that injury. Um, a long time, man. He said the the one dude that really cared about him, Jim Ross. So shout out to Jim Ross. He's a good dude. Yeah, Jim Ross is a good dude. And yeah. uh, but after that. Owen ended up mysteriously dying, you know, after costing the company fucking millions of dollars. So it's a little conspiracy theory I have, you know. What the fuck? I've never heard. I've never thought of that. Yeah, I mean, what yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have never thought and, of any of that. And he never checked on Steve in the hospital. He wasn't really apologetic about it. And, you know, and, and I mean, is that just karma or was there some sort of conspiracy involved? Huh? Yeah. Woo. My fucking jaw is dropped right now, <laughs> brother. I've never fucking even thought of that. Any way, shape, and form. Yeah, dude. Woo. You never know, man. You never know. Like, Woo. Do you think that's I, why... Do you the, think that's that, why that, that accident that the, happened well, to Owen? Well, I mean... I mean, let's, let's talk about it for a second since we're here. Do you think that's why the wife will never let him be shown anywhere shape and form on wwe television oh. is possibly because of that wow that's a, see that's something that i didn't goes, even yeah. know yeah and now they that makes even more sense they won't let she will not let wwe fucking touch owen oh wow talk about reinforcing my fucking theory here oh. Oh, but that makes total sense the chips add up you know and especially the way the world is all these fucking conspiracies i promise i wouldn't talk about COVID or anything but there's a lot of fucking bullshit out there we're yeah. getting lied to all the time by our government and and you know the conspiracies are real man so you're the I, second I person this week them. that i've talked to on a podcast that I, I kind of agree with you. I believe that all of our po all politicians are crooks. I don't fucking believe any of them. They're all in it for money. They all in it for themselves. They don't give a fuck about us. Nope. Right? You know, and you were the second person to agree with me on that. So I bet you there's more of us. Yeah, everyone's bought and paid for, man. Everyone's a shill. And then I hear like, uh, who's that basketball player recently who um, he posted like an Alex Jones story, and um, fuck, who was that? Um, popular basketball player, but he got fined by the ADL. He ended up coughing up a half million bucks. I have no idea. Um, yeah, it just happened recently. Fuck, I'm so bad with names. Uh, but yeah, this shit's real, man. Fucking uh, yeah, people are all bought and paid for, and you say, say the wrong thing. And uh, yeah, you got to pay the price for it, man. And people come down hard. And I'm watching Charles Barkley, like, say he needs to be suspended and he needs to be fined. And for what? Just sharing something that was true? Come on, man. Yeah. And that just shows me that Barkley, you're a fucking shill, man. You're a globalist, bought and paid for fucking shill. And I used to really like Barkley as a fan, but, man, um, after hearing uh, him come out like that, that makes me think he's a piece of shit, man. I lost all respect for him. Now you heard it here first. <laughs> fucking hell. 
Um, so you uh, you had a little bit of a health scare uh, exactly a year ago. Yeah, dude. I should have just like I'm big and old, you know, 45, and I got in the pro Shut wrestling. The fuck up. You're not old. I got into pro wrestling late, so I just would do the basics, you know, like spine busters and, and uh, you know, just some basic pro wrestling moves and my submissions, my jump spin kick, and it kind of got too easy, so I wanted to up the level of difficulty. So I started go, going off the top rope, dropping elbows, you know, and uh, I was really scared to do it at first, and then, boom. It fucking wasn't too hard, man. And, and I was like, wow, that's my new finisher. I did that in the Aldis match, jump, spin, kick, elbow drop. And then uh, uh, and that was my, my finishing combo, you know, set him up with the jump, spin, kick, then go off the top rope. And uh, I, I did it like 100 times, at least probably no problems. And then I was on a hard ring one night and fucking did the elbow drop. And I was fine. I finished the match. And it wasn't until I woke up in the morning and tried to get out of bed. I couldn't, I couldn't fucking walk. When it turns out, I shattered my lumbar vertebrae and my sacrum. Holy shit. Yeah. And, and uh, I tried to tough it out. I tried to continue with my job. I worked for Hytiva, a cannabis technology company. Yep. And I just tried to suck it up. And uh, it kept getting worse and worse. And finally, like a week and a half later, I took myself to the hospital to try to get treated. And the fucking doctor turned me away and ended up throwing me out of there. And yeah, that's that, when that's I, it. yeah, that's really interesting. What, what I was talking about when he asked me if I had been uh, vaccinated. And I said, hell no. No, and then he's like, "Okay, wait over there." And I wait for hours. I'm on crutches in pain, and I'm watching all these people who came in after me go in. And finally, I'm like, "Dude, are you gonna see me?" He's like, "I did see you." I'm like, "Are you gonna treat me?" And he's like, "I did treat you." Then I fucking lost it on him, and uh, I went off on him. And then he called the security over there, and they started throwing me out. And I'm like, "I'm fine. I'm just gonna go." And I'm like, crutching myself towards the door. And when the security guards pushed me. And my crutch went out, and I fucking planted my knee. I'd been hobbling around on one leg for 10 days, so, and I got a bad knee anyway. And I fucking tried to plant, and my knee popped. I ended up popping my ACL, and I went down. And I got up, and they were all around me, security guards, and I just swung my crutch at them, like, twice. Like, get the fuck away from me. I'm like, I mean, I'm really hurt, and you guys are going to fucking, like, tackle me? That's what I thought. If they tackle me, I would have died, man. I was, like, in so much pain, and I'm like, holy shit, they're going to shoot me. So I scurried in the bathroom and locked the door. And then I busted out my phone. I got to, like, they're going to tackle me. I got to record this. I'm just going to try to get the fuck out of here. So I did. I got out. And I had my phone on. You can't record. You can't. Re- I'm just going, you know. I'm just getting out of here. And I go outside. The cops are there. And I did the same thing with the cops. Like, dude, I'm just trying to go. I'm just trying to get my car and go. I want your word that you're not going to pull me over, man. I just came here for treatment. And they're like, we're not going to pull you over. Great. And by the time I got home, you know, I posted it, right? And uh, my boss at work, the owner of the company, is like, pull that video down. No problem. I go to pull it down. And I can't get on my Instagram. It's all blank, my page. And I thought I was toast. I thought they kicked me off indefinitely. Yeah. But it turned out I had a six-month suspension. But they left that video up. I couldn't pull it down. So that video got more views than any other video I ever had. And of course, it didn't look good, you know. And I uh, ended up being out of work for like uh, four months. Uh, oh, yeah, a few days later, I finally went to the hospital again, another emergency room. And um, they uh, took my blood, and they could tell from, like, my blood values that I was uh, fucking had a terrible staph infection. Oh, and, wow. And they go, yeah, these indicators, like C-reactive protein and another one, were, like, off the charts. And I remember the doctor saying, man, he goes, if you survive this, you're going to be here for a couple months, like, probably 12 weeks. And I was like, what do you mean if I survive this? And he's like, like, you're fucking not. Uh, reactive protein it's off the chart dude i've never seen him this high like a lot of times well this turns out to be fatal and he's like you got a terrible staph infection uh, where, you so, had a staph infection in your back in my dude, spine dude, in your yeah spine because from, of from inflammation from, from the inflammation, wow, from inflammation. there crazy. wasn't any open wound or anything it was just from inflammation and uh i end up um uh, staying in the hospital for six weeks they wanted to keep me for 12 weeks 
man. And I couldn't take it, dude. Just in that hospital bed all day, like by myself. And like, I was like, please, you got to let me out of here, doctor. And he's like, okay, like, how's this? You know, we'll keep you for six weeks and then we'll insert a pick line in your arm. It's like a tube in your arm so you could self administer antibiotic IVs three times a day. And I had to do that for another six weeks after I got out of the ho hospital to clear up the staph infection. And then I was on a walker for like, uh, uh, you know, f four months total. Like, uh, of course, the hospital stay and then three months after that. And, uh, yeah, I ended up losing my job. And I loved my job, um, you know, because that fucking video. And it was literally like I've had 10 surgeries, broke 20 bones, had a ton of injuries. That was the fucking worst thing I've ever been through. That's insane, bro. Worst like, thing I ever been through. And that, uh, that it, made me think, like, you idiot, dude. Like, why did you need to fucking go off the top rope? Should have just stuck with your fucking basic wrestling. Like, I was getting over without doing it. Like, I didn't need to do that. And it was a hard ring. And I got a little bit older. My bones got a little more brittle. Like, I've always broken bones. And, you know, just came down, landed a little bit wrong. And that totally changed my life. So, Have you, have you ever heard of the, the word you know in pro wrestling called kiss keep it simple stupid there it is yeah hey. keep it simple stupid hey. that's yeah. why i don't go off the top rope though I, I go off the i go off the top if somebody's giving me a superplex just because i know i can land flat yeah you know that's it and you gave me a superplex oh that's right yeah. that was my first Fuck one yeah, man you did. yeah, yeah. I, I remember Popping you're like super black I'm, shirt. I'm like, yeah. How do you like, do this? Yeah. You're like, how do I do this? And are you sure you want me to do this to you? I've and never like, done this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm taking my own bump, bro. We're yeah, good. Yeah. Like, I'm giving <laughs> it to myself. I'm giving it to myself, bro. We're good. You know. So, uh, can, I'm gonna ask you a little bit of a personal yeah. question. All right. Go ahead. Going from the spotlight, going from you know being big UFC star to you know kind, I don't want to say normal Joe, Joe guy, but was that kind of a hard transition for you a little bit from not from like fame to yeah just, totally i mean yeah. it was my life it was every part of my life for so long and you know that's like your source of identity it's yeah. your ego's based on that's what people know you as. and yeah. and to have that kind of end abruptly uh like that uh, it was definitely hard a hard adjustment you know my whole life was revolved around mma um and then, uh, you know, I, I, it was hard, it, definitely. Um, and, and I got over it. And then I started the pro wrestling, and that kind of fed that itch to get my adrenaline yep. fill, entertain yep. a yep. Uh, crowd. And I had a job I loved with Hytiva, and I was getting wrestling gigs, you know, just maybe twice a month, but enough to just kind of keep me fulfilled. And I was in a great place. I loved my fucking life. And then... That shit happened, that injury last year, and yeah, it was devastating, man. It totally devastated me. And right when I was had learned to walk again and like started getting off the walker, like uh, I had a house fire and fucking lost all my material possessions. So lost everything. Got out with the clothes on my back. Uh, so it was a really rough year, honestly, man. Like, uh, uh, and yeah. now like in lost my job, my house, my health. Like, um, and I look good. I was in great shape, and uh, yeah, it was really fulfilled and happy. And I just man like uh it got really really down and now it's like i'm starting to rebuild again i got my uh life insurance license yep. i've been selling insurance uh selling funeral insurance too and uh and i just auditioned for a role i got in a, a movie called fighters um i just now that's where i came here from so i'm kind of getting it back but yeah it was a, a lot to deal with like uh you know and i was getting into comedy too and that was going well and then you know after all that shit happened it just like it was so devastating, man. I couldn't even drag myself out to do comedy. I was just like, you ever see uh, Adam Sandler and Funny People yeah. where he's dying of cancer? That's how I felt up there. Like, I'm just miserable. Like, and I'm supposed to be funny and fucking entertain everyone. And, uh, yeah, it was hard. So I kind of got away from that. And, uh, uh, but building back, man, like this acting gig will help. This job's helping. And, um, yeah, I'll get back the good thing about the stand-up comedy is you could do it old you know it's not like you, i'm gonna get too old to be able to do it Hell so no. 
yeah, I could I could still do that as I age. It's a good hobby to do when when you age and well, you're too old to, to do the other more physical things. Well, so. that and you're still here with us. That's that's something big right there. You know, that's something, you know, yeah, you're going through trial and tribulation and all that stuff, you know, but all it's doing is just testing you. That's all it's doing. Yeah, it's just I know. You. I was be honest with you. I was a little bitter with yeah. God. Like, you yeah. know, I was. Like, um, it, it, I didn't mean to go that route. No, I it's all right. To, I didn't mean to go that route anyway. But I, I, I was I just, like, I don't know. I was just feeling, I, I was just feeling it in my chest right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's how I felt, dude. Cause I was on a, a good roll. I was living a pretty clean life. I had quit drinking. I was like, uh, over three years uh, off the booze and, you know, just like trying to be as honest as possible, not take advantage of people, serve people, help people out. And then they go through all that. It was like, what the fuck? You know, God, I could understand if I was being some lying piece of shit, ripping people off. But uh, I wasn't. And I just felt like I didn't deserve it. But, hey, that's that's part of life. And, um, you know, you got to deal with tragedy. This the, the, the Buddhists call this incarnation the wheel of suffering. Yep. And that was uh, Buddhist four noble truths. All life is suffering, you know. Even getting what you want is suffering because it's in time and it passes. Of course, getting what you don't want is suffering. So all life is suffering. And the suffering comes from... Um, the cravings of mind, the way the mind attaches and thinks the way things ought to be. So you m remove those attachments, you remove suffering. And then, of course, to uh, remove those attachments is the eightfold noble path of Ashtanga yoga to kind of get clear of those attachments. But, um, yeah, that's a whole nother book into itself. But, uh, it, yeah, definitely... Uh, made me sit back and reevaluate everything but i survived man i lived and uh that's it rebuilding again but yeah i was i was fucking down in the dumps man for for a while the injury and the house fire and all that oh it uh feels good to finally uh be in a position uh to be able to just sit down and talk to you and not be all sucking like teary-eyed and full of sorrow and self-pity and i'm kind of over that you know you sound like you're in a better place you really do. I am. You know, I am. You sound like you're in a better place. I'm getting there, man. And and I and I love seeing that because watching you go through what you went through broke my heart because I knew you personally. Yeah, and it was like that. Like uh, giving up the fighting was a really hard thing, and I felt like I had, you know, I went through a bad time and a lot of drinking and got the DUI that made TMZ and all that and just so a lot of personal shit. And I finally like had gotten over that and had a job I loved and. Uh, digging the wrestling, having fun with it. I felt young again and inspired and vibrant and was doing this stand-up comedy and just felt like I was in such a good place. And then the rug got pulled out from under me and boom, uh, crashed pretty hard. And uh, yeah, and like now uh, to be healthy again, to be able to walk uh, and without a walker assisted and to be able to go just, you know, I was, I was so thankful just to go to the gym and lift a little bit, yeah. man. Like that was such a big deal uh yeah, yeah just to, like exercise and you know get back on my uh routine doing my yoga every morning and i do uh how's the body holding up it's a it's a mess you know i i need a new acl and a knee replacement um that's the main problem but the back is healed a lot I, I don't feel like i'm gonna be going off the top rope anytime well, that's soon good. that's you good know? let's let's try to keep the feet on the ground yeah i'll be yeah the bumps too man i'll be fucking taking simple bumps just landing flat on my back wait are you telling me you're still you, you still want to get back in there you still oh wrestle? sure you never retire from pro wrestling Fuck yeah. yeah let's go i'm gonna get back in there let's but, go yeah. you know yeah. what i want a one-on-one -on -one with you <laughs> oh yeah let's yeah have a match, Fuck dude. yeah dude let's do that let's, yeah uh, let's set it up i don't know how we'll set it up uh you know what we'll set it up we got it i got <laughs> right. it i, yeah, I literally dude. just thought about it right now i was like we can make this happen you, you know, know what else sucked to take? I took one of them, and I'm like, no more. And I took it right on the edge of the ring, not in the center. A fucking choke slam. That yeah. yeah I don't. You don't have to worry about that with me. Yeah. yeah so. No. no. Well, you, you do. All you have to worry about is getting chopped in the chest. Yeah, you could power slam me, fucking <laughs> spine bust me, body slam me. Just don't chop you in the chest. No chest chops. No, no chest chops. <laughs> no, you gotta give that. me a couple. Fuck that. Just <laughs> fuck that. hit me over the head with a chair. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Last question for you, man. Um, how does it feel, man, to know that a guy 
that you literally beat the shit out of and he beat the shit out of you force is your best friend oh forrest yeah yeah how is dude. That, how, like that's fucking cool yeah, we always got along really well, honestly. Like, he was my kind of guy. He didn't take himself too seriously. He's like the opposite of Tito, who's all about themselves and their image and just so self-absorbed and egotistical. And he's kind of self-deprecating and has that same sick sense of humor. So me and him always clicked really well. And, uh, yeah, and I, I did a podcast recently, and he was my first guest. We had a good episode. And uh, unfortunately, it was this this beautiful gym. Um, they had these boxing managers running the place, yeah. and they had a beautiful studio in there. And then the guy funding the whole operation uh, mysteriously died. They just found him hanging in his house. So wow. a lot of people don't think it was ruled a suicide, but it it sounds like he was suicided, if you know what I mean. So uh, that kind of put a damper on the podcast. Do we have an- another Owen? Another. <laughs> Could have another uh, one here. Yeah. Shit's Conspiracy, crazy man. Here. Yeah, you shit's always. When a guy gets found, like a leather strap hanging in his house, like from a doorpost, that's that's a sign that he probably didn't do it himself. The old fucking Jeffrey Epstein, you know? Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah. And did you see that gorilla that was Epstein's cellmate? A fucking big old gorilla. No. Yeah. And the cameras mysteriously went out that night. He fucking got suicided. And that guy got released from prison because of COVID. And he mysteriously died in his uh, apartment. So, come on, you know? Talk what? about snipping the loose ends. Uh, man, I feel like you should, like, do CSI or something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. We got a lot of conspiracies here, brother. Become a detective, Shit. man. You're a detective, man. Yeah, but then you fucking shed, shine light on these conspiracies, man, and then you get clipped, you know? You got to watch your back. And that's just not worth it, man. Like, I don't want to have to watch my back yeah, and, don't do that. you I know, don't, don't, worry I, about getting clipped. No. They have that heart attack gun now, too, that... You go up to someone and just hit them with the heart attack gun and it causes a heart attack. Is that the, is that the Bruce Lee gimmick? Yeah, the one-inch punch. Yeah. Boom. Boom. No, the CIA has a heart attack gun, yeah, and you can go around giving people heart attacks. And that's a what heart, I think. Wait, a heart attack gun? Gun, heart attack gun, what was yeah. That? Isn't that a fucking it, taser? It sends like a, a, I don't know the exact um, physics of it, but it's called the heart attack gun. And the CIA's had it for a long time. And that's what I think happened to Epstein's cellmate because he mysteriously died at home of a heart attack. And, you know, if you want to, you know, clip someone and not leave any signs, man, that's a perfect way to do it, man, the heart attack on the CIA. Yeah. I'm learning so many different things from this conversation. It's a fucked up world, man. It's a fucked up world. It's depressing, man. Ladies and gentlemen. I wish it wasn't this bad. You want to do it tomorrow? Got you. Our government's fucking lying to us. They're scumbags. They're all bought and paid for. And this world is so crooked. And our president's lying to us like on a daily basis. He's so full of shit. And I'm ashamed to be an American. I used to be proud to be an American. Now I'm like, God, we're the assholes of the world. We're sending billions and billions to Ukraine just so they could get slaughtered. They're losing their sucking soldiers at a ratio of about 10 of them to every one Russian. You know, and from the ages of 18 to 60, got to go get enlisted in the military. And it's just a slaughtering field. We're just funding them getting slaughtered. Don't you support Ukraine? Fucking, I don't support them all getting killed. Like, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Always look on the bright Always side of life. Are you still active on socials? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, socials? I go in phases, you yeah. know. I'll go a few weeks without opening up the Instagram. And and then, too, like, you tell the truth on there and you get fucking suspended and put in trouble and strikes and all that. So I just use it to promote my shit. That's I'm the co- commentator for high rollers, uh, jiu-jitsu, submission, grappling, and that's pretty awesome. I helped uh, Ramon Montano do a boxing show, amateur boxing show. I promoted that on social media. So I'm just using it. And, of course, uh, the wrestling events I'd promote on Hell there. Yeah. So I've gotten away from the politics on social media. 
just because I did I served that six month suspension, that didn't feel good, you know? And if people aren't fucking waking up to the truth, like they don't need to hear it from me, then go ahead, die. Take your fucking boosters and die. I love you, buddy. High five. <laughs> High five. Yeah. Thank you. Sledge. Thank you so much, buddy. We're going to fight sooner or later. Oh, yeah, yeah brother. Give me a reason to train again. That's right.